A former Anglican bishop is now a member of the Catholic Church. Peter Forster, the former Anglican Bishop of Chester, was received into the Catholic Church in Scotland last year. He is the fourth Church of England clergy member to become Catholic within the past year. And joining us now is Luke Copen, Europe editor of Catholic News Agency. Luke, welcome back. It's great to see you. Um, so what is drawing these former Anglican leaders to the Catholic faith? Do you know? And also, is this something that we expect to continue? Well, that's the big question. Why is this happening? Um, is it just a coincidence that uh, these bishops are becoming Catholics all at once? Or is there genuinely a movement behind it? Um, now, we can't really answer that question with certainty at the moment, because only one of the four uh, who have become Catholic in the past year has really spoken about his reasons for doing so. Uh, and that's the former bishop, Michael Nazir Ali, um, who is now a Catholic priest in the in the ordinariate. Um, he's the only one of the four um, to, have, to have given a, a really full explanation of what's, what was drawing him to the Catholic Church. Um, the latest figure to become a Catholic is, is very interesting. He's Dr. Peter Forster, um, the former Bishop of Chester. Um, what's notable about him is that he doesn't come from where you would normally expect uh, a bishop um, to, from the Church of England to become a Catholic, i.e. the Anglo-Catholic wing of the Church of England. In fact, he, he comes from the evangelical branch. Um, and um, he's the second to do so after a Bishop Nazir Ali. Uh, so but you have to ask there whether somehow the appeal of the Catholic Church is perhaps shifting um, and including not just those who are formed in Catholic spirituality, Anglo -Catholic, in Anglo-Catholicism, um, but also those from an evangelical background. There's something there that's also drawing uh, these quite senior figures to the Catholic Church. Yeah, very, very intriguing. Uh, something else I want to talk about, new developments regarding the Latin Mass in the Archdiocese of Westminster in London. What more can you tell us about that? So uh, Cardinal Nichols, the Archbishop of Westminster, uh, sent a letter uh, to the Latin Mass Society of England and Wales last month um, in which the Cardinal confirmed that it would no longer be possible uh, for traditional rite confirmations to take place within the Archdiocese. Um, now, this has become a real institution within the Archdiocese uh, because since 2004, the Archdiocese has provided an auxiliary bishop uh, once a year who would uh, preside at these confirmations in the traditional rite. Um, so it was a, there's a really established um, phenomenon there, uh, and uh, it's no longer going to happen. And that's as a result, um, not just of uh, the Pope's document, Traditionis Custodis, but also the responsa. Um, answering questions about the document that came from the Congregation for Divine Worship in Rome, which addressed this question of uh, the confirmations um, and gave a negative verdict on them and said it wasn't possible. Uh, Luke, I want to turn to some other news. Uh, yesterday kicked off Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee, marking her 70 years on the throne. Can you talk to us about the significance of that and also the festivities taking place? Yes, I mean, this is a really important event in the, the life of the UK, uh, because this has never happened before. Uh, the, the Queen Elizabeth II is the, the first monarch ever to reign for 70 years. Uh, she's making history with this. Um, so we, the actual event has, has, as you say, has taken place on February the 6th. That's when uh, she reached this landmark. But the big celebrations are coming in June. Uh, there's going to be a four-day public holiday in which there's all kinds of events, uh, including parades, the lighting, lighting of beacons. Uh, there's also going to be a service of thanksgiving in St. Paul's Cathedral in London, uh, at which um, there'll be an opportunity to thank God for her reign. Uh, and I imagine that there'll be Catholic representation at that event. Um, and also, uh, it's worth pointing out that the, uh, the Jubilee is also being celebrated by many in the, in the Catholic Church in England and Wales. Cardinal Nichols himself was uh, tweeting yesterday uh, and congratulating the Queen on her um, reaching this milestone. And he was also as well uh, praising her for, for the Christian faith that she's displayed in public life over those 70 years, because that, that's been a very, very important uh, thing for Christians in this country to know that the Queen is uh, personally committed to the faith and uh, that it's helped to support her uh, through the vicissitudes of her life. Yeah, and 70 years. That's absolutely incredible. Look, before I let you go, what else are you following? Uh, well, uh, the whole country, of course, is talking about Boris Johnson uh, and about uh, the latest troubles that he has. Uh, I mean, you might ask, why is this of interest to Catholics? Well, 
I think partly because Boris Johnson is, in fact, himself a baptized Catholic. Uh, that became clear after he uh, um, had a wedding at Westminster Cathedral, the Mother Church of England and Wales, last last year. Um, and um, that is an unusual thing in itself to have a Catholic Prime Minister of, of Britain. Uh, he's the first. Um, so he is really uh, on the ropes at the moment politically uh, because of rule-breaking parties that were held in his residence of Downing Street uh, during the COVID uh, lockdowns, uh, and there's a great deal of public um, outrage over this, and uh, people are waiting to see whether he's going to survive this politi politically. Yeah, that's definitely causing a lot of con controversy. We know you'll continue to follow that, and we will as well. Luke, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks very much, Tracy.